Now, our next guest is famed for having predicted a number of economic, social and political trends from the 2008 global economic crash to the demise of the dot-com bubble. Joining us this morning to share his thoughts on the US presidential race and where Europe is headed is renowned trend forecaster Gerald Chalente. Good morning, Mr. Chalente. How are you? Good morning. Now, sir, um, I'm, I'm not going to uh, give your, your list of achievements and things that you've got right because they're, they're quite impressive. But, uh, you know, <laughs> green foods, green energy, Starbucks, etc., 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 all the various crashes, you've been right to an alarming degree. You're almost like a, a modern socio-economic and geopolitical prophet. So we've established your credits in, uh, in our mind. So let's get straight to business. Obama and Ro or Romney and why? It looks, uh, if, if I were to guess, because I wouldn't forecast this one, it, it would be Obama. Only because Romney, when you think about it, he won by default. He became the candidate by default. And the default was the other candidates were really nags running in a race. So it's not like anybody loves either of these candidates. Mm -hmm. And Obama's already there. Romney's an unknown. And then there's this other issue. And it's how do they count the votes? And let's get this straight. They don't count them very well in America. So we don't know where this is going to go. But if I was, I, I wouldn't put my reputation on this one. Okay. But I would call Obama the winner. Okay. Then what happens? Same as what it is. Either one of them. It's a lesser of two evils election. You listen to the people. I'm voting for so and so. It's a lesser of two evils. When you vote for a lesser of two evils, nothing good comes from it. However, if Romney gets in, at least he has the he has. Congress and, and the Senate on his side, which means that he can get done what he wants to get done. Obama can't because he's hamstrung. Well, that's not true, really, because Obama had two, ter two years of complete control over both houses. It's what they are. They don't do anything. They have both, you watch both the Democrats and the Republicans over the years, they accomplish nothing. Okay. Um, you, you're talking about, uh, you, you have very strong opinions on American um, um, politics. Uh, you, I think we can both agree American politics is very badly broken. Do you think it would be fixed? Could it be fixed? Not with the current systems in place. They call them the Republicans and the Democrats. Where I come from, you could call them the Bananos and the Gambinos. You know, really. It's the same. It's a gang of 535. That's how many congressmen and senators there are telling 312 million people how to tie their shoes. We need a new system. And you can't break into the system. It's locked. So you don't see, certainly in our lifetime, uh, that there would ever be a viable third party? There could be. And, and I believe there, is, there are other ways. The model that I see that works the best on the planet is the Swiss model, direct democracy. I talked about voting. If we could v bank online, we certainly could vote online. If we could move trillions of dollars a day around the planet, we could secure our votes, considering, of course, in the United States, they can't count votes very well anyway under the current system. So direct democracy means if you want to go to war, let the people vote. You want to bail out the banks? Let the people vote. Let the people vote. That's what they do in Switzerland. It's not a bad place, you know. Yeah, the problem is, is that people tend to vote the way they're told to vote, and they, they, they go to various media outlets uh, that reinforce what it is they, they want to think. So, for example, if you're on the right in America, you go to Fox News. If you're on the left, you probably go to MSNBC. And all it does is just reinforce, um, um, you know, a, a entrenched views. Things don't change very much. Well, they could because, right, for example, with the bailouts that they had in the U.S., they were running 500 to 1 against them. But you have a gang, again, of 535. They call it, they call it representative democracy. Mm. They're not representing the people. They represent the people that give them the most amount of money for campaigns. Okay. Uh, I, most people, the vast majority of uh, normal, ordinary people, uh, are concerned with home, heart, and wallet. Uh, wallet, particularly. Sure. Uh, the American economy is in the toilet. Uh, uh, hard to see how any economy could get out from underneath the deficit it has. Do you, do you think it can be fixed? Of course it can. Here's one way. How about the defense budget? How about stop fighting all these wars all over the world? We're talking over a trillion dollars in defense and defense-related expenditures. Listen to what Eisenhower had to say. Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces, five-star general, two-term president. 
The military industrial complex is robbing the people, the future of, its, it, it, uh, of the children, the genius of the scientists, and the sweat of its laborers. They did it, and they continue to do it. So you listen to Obama and Romney, both of them are very strong on defense. They're not cutting it where it needs to be. And all, nobody talks about it. No one talks about cutting defense. We're losing wars in that. A trillion dollars down the drain in Iraq. A million people killed. Hey, let's go to Afghanistan. I got an idea. Let's let's go to Libya, having a humanitarian mission. Listen to Obama and Romney on the debates. We got to take out Assad. You know, I could balance the budget. Let's have a World Wrestling Federation face-off on pay-per-view with Obama and Romney against Assad. No, there's ways of doing it. Also, the whole tax breaks for the multinationals. It's only the people that are paying. Well, that's true. I know. I probably you noticed over the weekend that Apple are paying less than two percent on their uh, their foreign earnings, which yes. is quite extraordinary. Um, Europe. Um, you you reckon that Ireland should leave the EU? Um, you know, you're not the first person to say that, but why do you think so? Let's look at what this really is. The Eurozone, the, the, the Euro began, what, 10 years ago for all intents and purposes. I was in Italy, it was 88 cents to a dollar. It's not working, it's failing in front of us. Look at, the, look at the bailouts that are going on. The bailouts, by the way, are against the Maastricht Agreement, the Lisbon Treaty, that's put the Eurozone into place. It's not working, it's only 10 years old. And what it's done, it's made everybody poorer, again, except the multinationals. It's very easy to do trade with one currency. It's failing. It's failing in Greece. It's failing in Italy. It's failing in Spain. It's failing in Portugal. It's failed in Ireland. And who is paying the bill? Mm. You are. The people are. That's very true. Now, that leads us on to a very important point, a very serious point, actually, because you reckon that, uh, that, that we could be on the cusp of uh, an almost doomsday scenario, a potential World War III, because of what's going going on in France, Spain, Portugal, Greece, here. And it is true that if you look at previous historical examples, that when you have an educated middle class with no jobs and no prospects who see a, a regime above them that is self-serving and not for and of the people, then revolution follows. So we, we could be facing a, a, a potential war. Now, whether it's, it's a world war or whether it's a whole series of is civil wars, I'm not entirely sure. The crash of 1929, Great Depression, currency wars, trade wars, world war. The panic of 08, Great Depression, currency wars are going on, trade wars are going on, world war. There's a war in Yemen, there's a war in Bahrain, there's a war in Syria, there's a war in Libya. There's a war, as you mentioned, you have unemployment rates among young people over 50%. Think about it. Young guys, out of work, educated. Yeah, there's what, what are the indignados design. in the street, millions of people taking to the streets. You see it in Spain, you see it in Greece, you see it in Portugal. It, there was no Arab Spring. All that was about was all the money was at the top of the pyramid and the people are living on four to ten dollars a day. It's, it's all about money. Far too few have much too much and way too many have much too little. What will it look like? If they invade Iran, that's the beginning of World War III. Even without that, you're going to see more regional conflicts. And as long as NATO and the United States keep getting involved in all of these other conflicts, you're going to see regional wars, civil wars. You know how they say generals keep mm. fighting the last war? This will be wars of weapons of mass destruction, suitcase-sized nukes. <sighs> On that um, uh, optimistic Happy note. note. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald Chalente, uh, uh, fascinating. And if people want to see more and hear more of what you have to say, they can see you in the Gibson Hotel uh, on, uh, in Dublin on the 6th of November. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you.